three gimbals. One winner, DJI GU Feutech. Which is the better gimbal? Let's find out. I've made a handful of gimbal videos this year and each video was about a small gimbal that had recently come out. Now it is time to put them to the test and see which one is actually the best. Each have their strengths and weaknesses, but only one is gonna come out on top as the king of tiny gimbals. To judge the gimbals, we will be using six categories. Price, payload, weight, portability, features and functions, and accessories. But there will also be a seventh category, and that is what is it like to actually create with these gimbals? As a YouTuber, part of what I do is talk about the different specs of different pieces of gear. But as YouTubers and filmmakers and content creators, I feel like we get way too wrapped up in the spec sheet of new pieces of gear. When in reality, there is so much good gear out there that what matters more is, hey, what is it like to create with? Does it help you do your job better? Is there anything about it that actually gets in the way or is that thing you thought was a nuisance or a bad thing actually not a big deal? I want to know how I feel when I'm actually using it. So without further ado, let's dive into it. The DJI RS3 Mini was my first small gimbal and that used to cost 339 pounds. Now I'm gonna put the US dollar conversions on screen for all my US based friends so everyone's happy. But right now you can actually get it for 259 pounds and it's been on sale for a really long time and I don't really think that's gonna change probably because of our next contender, the G and Cinepear Weibo 3E, which is usually 249 pounds, but right now on Amazon, you can get it for 219 pounds. It's also 249 pounds on GN's website. And lastly, the Feutech Scorp Mini 2. On Feutech's website, we actually have the US dollar number, which is $269. And on Amazon, it's usually £289, but right now you can get it for £229. So one point goes to Ji Yun for their more affordable gimbal, and I'm gonna have to give them a second point as well for the next category, which is the payload capacity. The Cinepure Weeble 3E can hold up to three kilos, the RS3 Mini from DJI can hold up to two, and unfortunately, a small payload capacity from Feutech Scorp Mini 2 of 1.2 kilos. The next category is weight, as in the weight of each gimbal. The Cinepure actually comes in at the heaviest tier, weighing at 990 grams, so technically still less than a kilo and not too bad overall, but it is the heaviest as the RS3 Mini from DJI only weighs 795 grams. The Scorp Mini 2, on the other hand, weighs 852 grams, so a point here goes to the DJI RS3 Mini. Our next category is portability. To judge this, we're gonna be using a very simple test. How easily do these gimbals fit in my backpacks? <laughs> I personally like to carry gimbals in the outer side pockets of my backpack from Peak Design. And the DJI RS3 Mini and the G and Cinepure Weibo 3E both fit very easily into these side pockets. But the Feutech Scorp Mini 2, it just doesn't. Because of the shape of it, it isn't really suited to fit into a space like this. Now, we could try another backpack, my SAC backpack, and that fits all of these gimbals very comfortably because there's no side pocket, so I have to put it inside into one of the compartments. And because it's customizable, I can actually just change up the insides of the bag to make it fit whichever gimbal I want to put in. So that's a point each to the DJI and the Jiyun gimbals as they both fit into a wider array of backpacks. Next, we're going to look at the features and functions of all of these gimbals. All of them do the basics, the pan follow, pan tilt follow, the full follow, FPV mode, and then they all have the vortex modes as well. They're all called different things on the different gimbals, but they all do those basics. Now the list stops here for the RS3 Mini and the Cinepure Weibo 3E. And surprisingly, the underdog of the category, the Feutech Scorp Mini 2, um, yeah, it has a lot more, <laughs> it has a lot more to offer. The Scorp Mini 2 has panoramic photo, it has a waypoint mode, a time-lapse and hyperlapse modes, a portrait shooting mode where you don't need to take the camera off the gimbal and physically change it. It, it basically is a glorified, like it just points the gimbal straight up so the camera's pointing straight up but technically in a pinch that works and lastly it has a ai tracking module built into the gimbal so it's full of features now if you guys have watched my video about the scorp mini 2 you'll know that the ai tracking module isn't really where it needs to be it isn't good enough for me to actually call it a feature and use it but I appreciate it being there and that it's a direction that Feotech seems to be going in because developed properly, it could be really cool. But all those other features are really legit, so it's one point to the Scorp Mini 2. Next up, accessories. The extra little bits that can make the gimbal more functional, easier to use, or allow you to do more with it. 
The Feutek Scorpion 2 unfortunately just completely misses out in this category. I couldn't find anything for it, apart from a few very nuanced and kind of random pieces of gear that I felt wouldn't add much to it. There seemed to be more for the larger version of the Scorp 2, but none for the Mini, and I guess it misses out because of that. Moving on to the Gion Cinepia Weevil 3E, I'm very happy to see that Gion actually developed a side accessory for the gimbal called the Master Move Bundle, and I actually talk about it in the first link in the description below, and yeah, it's great. But beyond that, there isn't really too much out there in terms of third-party accessories or even anything else from Ji Yun. You could put like a extendable monopod thing that Ji Yun does make for it, but that's kind of it. The DJI R3 Mini, you guys already know that Tilta makes accessories for them as well as DJI making accessories for them for all their RS3 gimbals as well as the Mini and now the RS4 gimbals. So there is a healthy abundance of accessories for the DJI RS3 Mini and so one point goes to the RS3 Mini. Like I said earlier, specs are important, but what I think is more important than specs is what is it like to actually use the tool? What is it like to use these gimbals to create with them and do they help me? Do they get in the way? Do they make me feel more creative? So that's why I want to find out by recreating the same three shots with each gimbal to see what it was like to use it. Using these three gimbals again gave me a quick recap as to what it felt like to create with them and obviously I'm using that as well as my past experience of using all three of these gimbals. Here are my thoughts on what it's like to create with each of them. As far as gimbaling goes, they all work well and do the job. I used my Lumix S5 Mark II for these shots and they're all capable of holding this camera but what I found annoying was that the eyepiece got in the way with the Feotex Corp Mini 2 it would hit the roll motor, which meant I couldn't tilt my camera upwards and I couldn't get the camera into an underslung mode without forcing the camera past the motor physically. I had to push it with my hand and that just isn't ideal because you're gonna damage the gimbal motors over time and maybe even damage the camera. It's not really worth it. The Scorp Mini 2 works fine if you're using a smaller camera like my S9, but I don't want to be limited to which cameras I can use when I'm using a gimbal. I want to be able to choose. So to me, that is two limiting factors here. When it comes to smoothness, I felt that the DJI and the Gion gimbals handled this the best. There's just something about the way these two gimbals move which made me feel more confident in the shots and like their algorithms were just helping me out. Don't get me wrong, the Feotech does this well too, but it feels just a little bit better with the others. One area the DJI excels in is its touchscreen, joystick, and buttons. Hitting record on the gimbal is easy to do because of the button placement and proximity to where your hands already are on the gimbal. Plus, the large touchscreen makes it really easy to see if my camera is balanced correctly and what my settings are. The G and Cine Pier Weeble 3 e doesn't do too well in this area as the menu screen, whilst it is OLED, it's not touchscreen and it feels very old school. And the way you navigate it is less than ideal. You have to use a wheel and then press the wheel in to select things and this just feels clunky. Don't get me wrong, it works, but it's slower than a simple tap on the screen and I'm also not really a fan of where the joystick is. It works fine like a joystick would, but because it's at an angle, when I push up, I'm always concerned I'm going to be pushing up and slightly to the left because of the angle of the joystick. I wish it was more straight on and flat. That way I know when I'm pushing straight up that it's just going straight up. These issues surprisingly don't exist with the Feotech gimbal. It too has a nice OLED touchscreen which you can just tap to go through your settings and the joystick is on a flat surface so it's easier to keep the movement straight. The one thing I do find myself second guessing my hand movement with a bit is the placement of the joystick. Now. I think it does make sense. It's just that I'm not used to it because all other gimbals do it differently. The joystick is where the touchscreen is and that is on the back handle that I find I'm not always holding how Feiyutech would intend because I'm so used to pistol grip gimbals, I sometimes try to hold it kind of similar to that and I'm also used to similar shaped gimbals having the joystick on the bottom handle compared to the top handle like the Jiyun Crane 3S. However, at least it doesn't have the issues that the CNP Weeble 3E did. Out of three, I'd give the RS3 Mini three points, the Weeble 3E two points, and the Scorp Mini 2 one point. Now it's time to settle the score, which gimbal has come out on top and which is a flop. With an affordable price of 219 pounds, a payload capacity of three kilos, portability, and how it feels to create with, the Xi'an CNP Weeble 3E gets five points. For a lightweight build of 795 grams, a large accessory support system, portability, and how it feels to create with, the DJI RS3 Mini gets 6 points. 
for unique features and functions and how it feels to create with, the Fayotech Scorp Mini 2 gets 3 points. That means the winner is the DJI R3 Mini. Congratulations! What are you going to do next? Now I do have to give an honorable mention to the Jiyun gimbal because if your payload is over 2 kilos, I genuinely think this is one of the best small gimbals that you can get of 2024. But of course, the DJI R3 Mini won for a reason, so congratulations to that gimbal. And uh, if there's a gimbal that I didn't speak about in this video, which one would you guys like to see me talk about next? I'm more than happy to make some more gimbal videos for you guys. And if you do want to see some of the videos I made about these gimbals, they're all around and you can click on one of them. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.